Hello and welcome to Table to Oddity. My name is Jay and today I'm going to be looking at basic builds and a basic list with Boba Fett and the Scout Troopers for Star Wars Legion. Now these have just come out today and um, I would have been doing my unboxing and maybe even my painting tutorial but I've missed my delivery and I can't get it till Saturday night because I'm at an X-Wing event on Saturday so... Mm, sucks to be me right now but on the other hand I thought we'd do this basic build. Now I'm not a person who plays with things that are unannounced like on Tabletop Simulator. I only I wait till they come out and then I play with it as it is. So I haven't actually played with these. Obviously some people have um, but keep in mind it's unplayed and uh, you know obviously as the game gets played in a few weeks things might change like opinions might change and that kind of thing. But I thought we'd have a look at the uh, like my version of the basic build basically. How uh, I many basics was that? And we're going to look at Boba Fett first. Of course, the legend, the legend, the myth, the legend, uh, Boba Fett. Now, uh, you can see on his card, I'm on Tabletop um, Admiral here, pretty decent site. Uh, I do recommend that, that this site if you are looking at your list building. But let's have a look at Boba Fett's abilities as a whole. Jump to Arsenal 2, Bounty, Impervious, and Sharpshooter 2. So that bounty is interesting. It basically lets you put a victory uh, token on your opponent's, one of your opponent's commanders. And if Boba Fett is the one that kills that commander, he gets that victory point. Could be very important in certain games. Um, one key thing to note there, I think, is that Arsenal 2. So you really want to be like maximizing the use of that. And uh, he has three weapons, one melee and two ranged weapons. So the instinct was to say it would be to say that you should spend your turn shooting with Boba Fett. And um, I feel like that would be reasonable. He uh, surges to crit, which is very interesting on the offense. And he has a defensive surge as well. Red dice, five wounds, three courage, boom. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, so what's good on him, right? Uh, you know, I personally, well, I've picked Hunter here, right? Because I think Hunter, if you're shooting at a lone commander, it's going to give you an, and that lone commander has been injured, you're going to get an aim action. Now that obviously could be pretty, well, a free aim token, not an aim action, sorry. Um, but if you've put your victory command token on, him, on a, a commander and you want to take him down and that you've already wounded it, Boom, a free aim token would, would do nicely. Um, and let's talk about who you possibly want to put bounty on. Uh, it's not a great idea, I think, to put this on, say, like a Darth Vader or a Luke Skywalker. You're going to struggle to kill them. Um, I mean, it's possible, especially like Darth Vader, you could just keep, like, move forward, shoot him, and then keep moving back so he can't shoot, get into anywhere near range of you. Um, but it's a, that's a, a very unique, specific strategy. It, the likelihood that it, this is better to put on uh, commanders like Leia, Han, Veers, um, that kind of thing for now. I, I doubt it, it'd be good to put on Palpatine, but you never know. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about Chewbacca, but yeah, essentially the weaker the commander, the better it is to put on them. And obviously your goal is to kill them with Boba Fett, uh, probably shooting at them. So Hunter giving you an aim token once they've been wounded, fantastic. That doesn't work on trooper units, by the way. If a trooper unit has had like one model removed, it doesn't count. It's only on basically multi-wound models um, and multi-wound infantry models at the minute are pretty much commanders. Probably will apply to the, uh, the Wookiees and stuff like that, but... Uh, you know, that's something else. So Hunter for me is probably my favorite. I, for now, I think Hunter's probably the best. Duck and cover's not bad. Um, you can take a suppression token to get like cover, but the, the reality is you're so maneuverable with your movement three jump two that I don't think it would be something to take. Tenacity is not out yet, so we won't even properly look at that. Uh, so for me, it's Hunter. That's the one I would pick. Uh, I wouldn't really pick any of these targeting sculpts you could get a use out of. Um, if you With Hunter, it would actually combo nicely, but you've only got four dice. Um, are you really going to miss that often with three of them that you need to re-roll instead of re-rolling two? Just hit the mic to apologize. Not really. Grappling hooks. I mean, you can jump up, jump uh, height two. Are you really going to need it? No, I don't think so. Environmental gear, you just jump over it. <laughs> Emergency systems is an interesting one. Um, it only really would save you when you go from, when you get to zero wounds. So you're only really going to get one turn out of it, one use out of it. Not, it's not for me. It's not for me. So, I mean, my build for Bubba Fett is Hunter. <laughs> um, I think that's just the best thing got him. Um, and you could even run it without him. So the, there is that. And what we'll do, we'll very quickly talk about his command cards and, and possibly when to use them. The jetpack, 
I like this one, right? It's range three to four. Keep in mind you are movement three, so you've got a decent chance of, you, you know, you can move into range three or four and then shoot. Um, you could shoot that weapon um, with maybe the uh, range one to three PS1. And then you've got what? Blast, impact two, PS1. Pretty decent. I like that. I can see that being used turn one or two. Um, and just damaging a unit that's like a threat. The blast makes it really interesting. You could, in theory, have five dice against a unit in cover, and if you use it with the PS1 um, weapon, you know, you get they're ignoring cover and cancelling one of the blocks. Yeah, pretty pretty handy. The impact too makes you sort of want to shoot it as a, like a, a vehicle if you could, but, um, you know, I'm not sure that would be useful. The flame projector... Uh, there. The <laughs> ZX flame projector, yeah, pretty interesting. If you can move into range one, uh, the fact that you can use this in melee is also interesting. If you get... if um, if you do get tied up in combat with a infantry unit, you can pop this and completely wipe them off the board. Because as good as Bubba Fett is, uh, he's, uh, Impervious makes him good at sort of in melee against a character, but not really because he's not going to survive. He's like, he only has two attacks. Like Luke and Darth Vader, they're like five, six, that kind of thing. So um, against those kind of characters, no against Han and that kind of stuff. Yes, that makes sense. But uh, do they even have Pierce? I'm not even sure. Um, yeah, so I, I, I don't think he's that good in melee against most kind of troops or infantry. So I wouldn't necessarily want to get him stuck in combat. So I wouldn't use this in melee. But if you did get stuck in melee, you could use this and completely annihilate a trooper unit, perhaps. Uh, but also interesting in the fact that you can just move three and completely sort of annihilate a, a trooper unit hidden in cover. Yep, can't argue with that one. Uh, the whip card launch is sort of the same kind of thing in the sense that you don't want to be in melee combat. So... You could in theory use this card, uh, cause uh, an immobilization on um, an infantry unit that you're fighting and then move away. Um, I, I think that's probably the use there, but uh, if you have any other opinions then do let me know in the comments below. And uh, yes, so that's Bubba Fett. That's what I would take on Bubba Fett. The Scout Troopers, uh, it's weird the Scout Troopers, I think I do like the two-man team with the sniper rifle. Um, just, you know, it gives you cheap activations, 44 points, pretty decent-ish unit, two black dice, infinite range, essentially, PS1. Yeah, I, I need to see them if they're going to be useful, but that's possibly what I would use. Now, I do think the, the Sonic uh, Saboteur, um, because it's like range one, it's implying that you need to get up close and dirty, and the Scout Troopers have got Scout 1, so they can move one before the game. It's sort of implying getting close to a unit but staying in cover. So I actually think if you're going with the Saboteur, um, it makes sense to go with the full unit because then you've got, all got the range one to two black, two black dice, which I think would actually be a nice combination. If you get stuck, you could uh, maybe even throw the, um, the, the Proton Charge one turn, the, the Sonic Charge one turn, and then, you know, shoot the next and you'll still be in range two. So I, I think that's sort of the way I would, the two options that I would play it as. However, in my actual list, I'm going with the full uh, full team with the DLT uh, sniper rifle. Just because I think like, if you do get that in range two, um, if somebody, like, maybe somebody's coming towards you at an objective or something, well, you're gonna do a lot of damage uh, and I quite like it. Duck and cover makes perfect sense. Great synergy. Um, you already, you have a low profile. So um, if you have light cover, you increase your cover to heavy cover. So if you're in no cover, you can pop duck and cover and you essentially get heavy cover at the cost of a suppression token. That's fine. All right, I think that's the combination there. But yeah, the heavy weapons, I want to play them more, but I think I'm favoring the sniper. But maybe that's just me. I do really like the range one to two black dice. I really dislike the white defense dice. So yeah, that's that's basically it for the the way I would personally build these. As I said, I really want to play them out first and foremost and see where we end up. Um, and then from a list kind of point of view, you know, Bubba Fett's all the way down here because he has to be for some reason or the way the website is formatted. Um, you want a cheap commander. I don't think he's necessarily worth taking with Vader. Vader's too expensive. So I think Veers and Bubba Fett is the classic combination. Um, and then just in this list, I've got two Stormtroopers with DLT, two Snow Troopers with the Flame Trooper and the Emergency Stims. I really like that as a combination. Maybe throw on Impact Grenades. I have got 10 points, but, you know, you don't have to take Emergency Stims and you can pick any combination of the core units that you like. But this is just an example, but we got four core troopers there. Bubba Fett with Hunter, pretty decent. I've got a full unit of Scout Troopers with the Sniper, which I did say I wouldn't actually run, but you could easily have two Sniper units if you wanted, but... 
actually will own these come Saturday, so <laughs> that's probably this is probably a list I will run. Um, and then two units of speeder bikes. That's nine activations right there. Um, and it, yeah, pretty good. Wouldn't run anything on Vias. You're just having him for his, uh, you know, spot or two inspire. You're just going to keep him with your troopers. Um, and then obviously the DLTs and the flame troopers, you, you play accordingly. You know, interesting. I, I like the fact that now you can have a decent two commander. Obviously, uh, Boba Fett is an operative, doesn't count as a commander slot. I didn't mention that, but hopefully you'll, you'll know that. He's not a commander. He's an operative, so you need to run an extra commander with him, like an actual proper commander, and the best option is probably Veers. Um, yeah, the, it'll, I think the end list will be something like this. Obviously, you could take out the speeder bikes and have a, uh, an ATST if you wanted. Um, you know, you could even reduce, get rid of the scout troopers, put in the speeder bikes, get rid of a trooper unit, put in the speeder but an extra unit of speeder bikes. It's completely up to you. I think you probably don't need three speeder bikes if you've got Bubba Fett because Bubba Fett is movement three anyway. He's quite maneuverable. And that's really what he adds to the entire list overall. Like Bubba Fett now is an, like an actual viable commander that can do something, which I think the Imperial uh, list of, of lacked vader incredible if you if you can force people to fight vader fantastic vader's incredible um vias you just you're playing him at the backy side the back is just supporting the troops fine fine boba fett gives you like options in i think even if boba fett isn't very good in the end which i think he actually will be um I, he's just a lot more interesting than the other two character the other two commanders uh, obviously he's an operative so keep that in mind but he's just so much more interesting so much more versatile and i think like he will be a lot more fun to play as whether or not he'll be as fun to play against and <laughs> you know who cares get lost guys <laughs> uh, but yeah that's the way i see those lists um uh, yeah hunter i think is the standout one for uh bubba fett keep him cheap but keep him clean uh clean i don't know why i said that and the sniper rifle on the uh um the scouts are pretty interesting Hopefully I'll get my unit on Saturday. Probably try and do my painting tutorial as soon as possible. And then we'll go from there. If you like this video, do like as always. If you're not already subscribed, then sort your life out, mate. Because come on, get with. <laughs> it's all right, subscribe if you want to, Don't if you don't want to. Uh, but you should definitely have a beautiful day. Thank you to all my Patreons. I do really appreciate that. Thank you very much to those people. And uh, yeah, have a beautiful day and goodbye.